In this video, we get our first exposure to Red Hat's platform as a service offering, OpenShift Enterprise. We will explore its features and architecture. We will see how easy it is to deploy a multi-container application on OpenShift Enterprise. According to Wikipedia, platform as a service is a category of cloud computing services that provides a platform allowing customers to develop, run, and manage applications without the complexity of building and maintaining the infrastructure typically associated with developing and launching an app. A platform as a service helps developers by eliminating the wait time for the environment provisioning and testing. OpenShift Enterprise is Red Hat's platform as a service offering. Some of the benefits OpenShift Enterprise brings to the developer are Simplified multi-container integration. That means that an application can be created using multiple containers to enable both development and production environments. This approach guarantees consistency among production and development as well, as it supports a simpler drift management. Certified and supported container images. Container images that are managed by Red Hat will have an environment tested and supported to avoid security issues. Using source to image container building, these images will be consistently updated to the latest version without major integration problems. OpenShift Enterprise features includes source to image container building and deployment. This improves the container image assembly process because it performs multiple operations at once and uses the latest images to keep application consistency. Orchestration for composite applications built from multiple containers. This supports integration among multiple containers without the need to change multiple configuration files, which minimizes the large set of customization needed. Polygot, a variety of databases, and framework supported. We have support for Java, Node.js, PHP, Perl, and Ruby directly from Red Hat plus many other part from partners, OpenShift Commons, and the larger Docker community. MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB databases are available directly from Red Hat, and others from partners and the Docker community. Red Hat also supports Red Hat JBoss middleware products, such as JBoss EAP, ActiveMQ, and Fuse, all running natively on OpenShift. High availability and failover. This enables an environment with multiple masters to guarantee high availability and failover support in an OpenShift enterprise deployment. There's an extensible control through REST APIs. This controls the whole OpenShift enterprise environment using a powerful REST API that is used from the command line interface and the web console. OpenShifting uh, also includes team project management and collaboration. Due to its multi-tenant feature, multiple collaborators may develop an application running on OpenShift using a shared source code management system. Integration with other third-party tools can be used to trigger the build process for the latest updated version. Let's take a look at the architecture of OpenShift Enterprise. OpenShift Enterprise is a set of microservices services built over Red Hat Enterprise Linux. OpenShift adds platform as a service capabilities over the base operating system like remote management, multi-tenancy, increased security, application lifecycle management, and self-service interfaces for developers. This figure illustrates the OpenShift software stack and each component is described. The base operating system must be a vanilla Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system. Then Docker provides the basic container management API and the container image file format. On the next level, we see that Kubernetes provides container orchestration. etcd is a distributed key value store used by Kubernetes to store configuration and state information about the containers and other resources inside the OSC cloud. 
OpenShift adds to the Docker and Kubernetes container infrastructure the capabilities required to that are provided of a platform as a service platform. Continuing from bottom to top and from left to right, the OSE Kubernetes extensions are additional resource types stored in etcd and managed by Kubernetes through new controllers provided by OpenShift. These manage the application lifecycle, you know, build, deploy, update, networking, and storage. Those additional resource types form the OSE internal state and configuration alongside application resources managed by standard Kubernetes resources. Containerized services fulfill many paths infrastructure functions such as networking and authorization. Some of them run all the time while, while others are started on demand. OpenShift Enterprise lever leverages the basic container infrastructure from Docker and Kubernetes for most of its internal functions. That is, most OSE internal services run as containers orchestrated by Kubernetes. Then we have runtimes and XPaaS as base container images ready for use by developers, each pre-configured with a particular runtime language or database. These can be used as is or extended to add different frameworks, libraries, and other middleware products. The XPaaS offering is a set of base images for JBoss middleware products, such as JBoss EAP and ActiveMQ. Then we have DevOps tools and user experience on top of the, the pyramid here. OpenShift provides web and command line management tools for developers and system administrators. This allows the configuration and monitoring of both applications and OpenShift services and resources. Both web and command line interface tools are built from the same REST APIs, which can be leveraged by external tools like IDEs and continuous integration platforms. OpenShift also can reach external source control management repositories and container registries and bring their artifacts into the OpenShift cloud. Let's take another look at an, another architecture diagram for OpenShift Enterprise. Much of this should look familiar since OpenShift is based largely on Kubernetes and Docker. However, as we learned previously, OpenShift brings some new resources to the table. OpenShift provides a routing layer that allows a service to be exposed through a fully qualified domain name. This is an implementation of HA proxy. One of the chief features of OpenShift adds the capability to create application containers using the source to image process. The developer provides the URL of source code management for a given application. OpenShift pulls the source, builds it, and creates a specific type of container image with the application deployed. This is a very powerful tool. It's time to see OpenShift Enterprise in action. In this demonstration, I will deploy a simple application that highlights the ease of scaling an application. Let's look at a diagram of the hex board application. It's composed of two parts, the front end hex board and the back end sketch pod. The web application graphs every running instance of the sketch pod application. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to build the hex board and sketch pod applications. So I'm going to use the OC command line interface that's part of OpenShift to build these two applications. So first I need to log in as the user student with the password of Red Hat. And so since I don't have any projects, I need to first create a project. OC new pro project export. Now I have the project so I can create my app with the new app command. So with the new app command I'm going to give it a label of service group then I'm going to tell it to use the node.js builder and I'm going to point it to my github repository I'm 
Next, that GitHub repository contains a lot of different applications, so I'm going to tell it the contents, context directory where it should look for the Sketchpod application. And I'm going to give a name to the application called Sketchpod. So looking over my commands, making sure I spelled the GitHub repository correctly, the contents, context dir, and the name. I will let it go forward. Now, I just did an OC get pods command, and I can see that the build has started running. If I use the build logs command, let's see, OC get pods, OC build logs, sketch pod dash one. We can see that it successfully built that container and pushed it out to the registry. So this application is now built uh, successfully and I can see it should be deploying it now. Let me do that again for you. We can see that it's in the middle of deploying. So now we're able to uh, build our Hexboard application that's going to look at our backend Sketchpod application. This, the Hexboard application needs access to my security token of my session, so I'm going to capture that in an environment variable. So to do that, I'm going to export using the OC command, who am I? and I'm going to give it a token. If I echo that, I can see my encrypted token. So now I'm going to uh, create my new app. Let me see what's going on with my sketch pod builds. Um, all right, so I've got a pod running for sketch pod. So now I'm going to use the new app command to build my hex board. So this is a long command. We're going to pass an environment variable passing in the access token. So I'm going to escape that from the environment variable access token. Then I'm going to tell it to use the Node.js builder, point it to my GitHub repository. give it my context or of apps hex board. And finally, I'm going to name this uh, front end application hex board. So let's look over that very carefully. The OC new app command passing in an environment variable of access token. The Node.js builder pointing to the GitHub location for my source code, telling it to look in the subdirectory apps hex board to get the application and finally, naming the application Hexboard. And so I can see that the Hexboard has started building. So I can look at the build logs for Hexboard. So in building this, uh, when you do the build logs command, you'll see it just automatically follow the build. So here it's pulled the source code that I pointed to, and now it's starting the build process for Node.js. And it looks like it successfully built the application. So now we're waiting for it to create the composite container image and push it out to the internal OpenShift registry. So now we see that it's pushing, and we'll wait for that to push out, and then the last message we'll get is saying that it's successfully pushed.
And there we go. So our Hexboard application has been successfully built. Let's take a look at what's going on with our pods. So now it's deploying the Hexboard application, so it gets through a build process, and then it actually starts creating containers using that container image. So we can see that the deploy is still running. All right, now we have a pod running for our SketchPod application and a pod running for our Hexboard application. So I'm going to look at um, OC status here. And one of the things we notice is that all we have for the Hexboard application is a service. Well, what we want to be able to do is get to our web application from a browser. In order to do that, we need to expose the application through a route. So I'm going to expose the uh, Hexboard service and give it a host name. So now I have a route. So if I do OC get routes, we can see that there is a route um, from port 80 to point port 8080 that is going to let me get to my app via the fully qualified domain name of hexboard.cloudapps.example.com. All right, it looks like our app's ready to access. So I'm going to switch to my browser and I'm going to enter that URL. And here we see that we have one pod running. So what this does is this graphs all of the sketch pods that are running in the background. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play with scaling this app. Scaling is the ability to tell Kubernetes how many um, pods should be kept running at all times. So I'm going to scale this up uh, to run um, four or five, let's see. OC scale DC sketch pod replicas equal four. And it says it's successfully scaled. So we'll sit here and watch what happens to the, to the screen. And we can see that as the pods are coming up, it's making the backgrounds uh, dark. So we have four pods running. If I go repeat that command and this time tell it to run eight, we'll see even more of the board filled in. So four have started. And now they're all filled in. So we only have um, four boards left and we'll just leave it at that. Um, so if I were to, I can also scale back down to one, for example, and that tells Kubernetes to run only one pod. And we can see that it's already killed all the extraneous pods, and we now have one pod running. So in the next video, we'll explore the OpenShift Enterprise web console